word before I forget because there's tons of people that message me and couldn't come tonight, which is totally fine. Um, but moving forward, um, well, hopefully, to be honest, hopefully none of you are on this call again because I want you to be on the next call, which is my leader's call, which is diamond and above. So I always have a call every month for my, my diamonds and star diamonds, and it's a leadership call, and, and we talk about different things. And I decided I wanted to have a call for the group of you that are all Emerald coaches. And my assumption is if you come to a call like this, you really wanna take your business to the next level. And, and you want to get to that next level. You want to get to that next income level or that next rank level. So it's sort of a, it's sort of a selfish way for me to see who is really wanting this business to work, who's going to take the time out to be at a call like this, ask questions, and really figure out maybe where the, the blind spots are in your business or where you just need a little bit of guidance. So... This is a time for you guys to ask questions. A few of you messaged me, emailed me, all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna cover questions in the end. Hi, Teresa. Um, unmute yourself, this is not school. I don't want it just to be me like barking orders at you and stuff like that. I want this to be like to talk back and forth um, and also use the chat box if you have some thoughts come up as I am talking, okay? Give me one second. Delaney, honey. Delaney, she talks to her friends on this messenger kids. And so there's like five of them in a chat. Like it's like this actually. And it's so funny if I say to Delaney, so it's time for supper. I'm on a call. <laughs> so she hears me say that. And I said, listen, when your calls start making us money, you can say that to me. But until then, <laughs> you need to get off your call. Anyways, okay. So I'm going to start. I know that in my little message, I said, you know, I'm going to give you some social media tips and we're going to talk a little bit about strategy. And I'm going to do that. We are going to do that. But coming from a place where I got a lot of your messages today telling me where you were having challenges and struggles, I realized that everyone still always thinks more engagement more followers, learning strategy is the secret. And, and truthfully, after seven years of being in this business and really honestly seeing ebbs and flows in my business, the thing that will set you apart is your mindset. And I know it is so annoying to hear that because really you'd rather me just say, can you just give me a, re a way to get a thousand more followers that are all going to buy challenge packs. And I wish there was, <laughs> believe me, I wish there was that magic that I could give you. But the truth is all of that stuff will happen when you really put a lot of emphasis on your mindset and your belief in this business. Because what people are really, really attracted to is confidence. And when you are believing in yourself, and when you are believing that this is gonna work, all of that energy flows out into everything you do. You show up in your stories differently. You write your posts differently. Your messages are different. And I even find that still myself. If I go into a month with like, of course I'm gonna hit my goals. Like why, why wouldn't I? Like who doesn't wanna work with me? And, and I say these things to myself. I'm very strong now in my mindset, in my affirmations. So when I go into a month like that, you know what happens? It's, it happens. It happens like in a couple days. It's kind of like magic. But I also have that, those months that I'm like, oh God, is this, is this going to be it? Is this going to be the month that nothing happens? That I just like, nobody's around. And those are the really hard months. And when I go and I look at it, I realize, well, you were the one that made it hard. You were the one that didn't believe that it would work. So we're starting the call with mindset. What I need you guys to write down is three things. You need to have a goal, okay? There will, you, you can listen to lots of different YouTube videos, Beachbody coaches, and they will say this term, you need a why that makes you cry. And I think that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard because when I cry, I want to go back to bed. 
You need a why or a reason or a goal that is actually going to make you get out of bed early and stay up really late. And, and I don't love the word hustle. In fact, I don't like it that much. But the truth is, when you're in this phase of your business, there's a little bit of hustle that has to happen if you want those big goals to, to be achieved. Okay. So sometimes there's times in the month, like, okay, for me, success club, until it is hit, I'm sort of in hustle mode. Like I'm always thinking, what could I share today that would help someone see that I can help them? So I hope you saw what I did there. It wasn't, what could I say to make them buy from me? What could I say that would make them want to buy a challenge pack? What could I do today that could help someone that then they would know that I have the ability to take them to their next level? So is that a recipe that would help my audience today? Is that me sharing part of my story about my struggles, but how I've kind of come to the next point? So you need to have a goal, a why, a desire, something that is going to make you do the hard days. That's going to make you keep working until you hit success club five or success club 10. Because at the base of everything, when you're an Emerald coach, of course, success club should always be your goal because that's the building block of getting you to diamond. It's really the easiest way. You get your challengers, they fall in love with you, Shakeology, the challenge group, the community, and then they just wanna stay. They don't wanna go anywhere else, right? It's a lot harder just to say, hey, Julia, how are you? Do you wanna become a coach on my team? Like, that is a really hard transition, right? It happens sometimes, but the easiest way is getting people into this community and really serving them. So what's the goal? You guys don't have to tell me this. I just want you to write down, I need a goal. I need a goal. What's the goal? Is it like your cottage? Is it a boat? Do you wanna like pay for your kids clothes? It's a, I don't care what it is. My goal made me hustle hard because I needed to replace six figures. So I hustled hard, but that was my goal. That doesn't have to be yours, but but think of it in relation. When that was my goal, I had to replace a six-figure salary. Getting up at four, I did it. So the second step is start envisioning. Like, envision yourself in the boat, at the cottage, at the new job, at the home at your desk, with your kids, walking them to school. Like, whatever your goal is, start, like, legitimately every single day envisioning this. The reason I can say this with such confidence is because now that I've been here for seven years and seen very, very high points in my business and really, really low, meaning super successful and not, I know what I did differently. The first half of my business was really easy, guys. It's so easy. It flowed. There was never that. There wasn't a lot of hard days. I just plowed through. But you know what I envisioned every single day? And I'm not kidding. Every single day, I envisioned telling my clients that I was never going to cut their hair again. Every day. It was like, I, I, it, like they would be talking to me and I'd be cutting. I know some of you have heard this story before. I'd be cutting and I'd be like, oh my God. I am so, I cannot wait to, like, I love you, but I cannot wait to tell you that I'm never cutting your hair again. I don't care that you want layers. I don't care that you didn't like the blonde last time. I just don't want to do this anymore. So every day I was envisioning not having to get up on Saturday mornings. Like I would drive to work on Saturday mornings and I'd be like, oh my God, two more months. It's only going to be two more months and I'm not going to have to do this anymore. So I was actually doing that step of belief. I, I had the goal and I was actually like seeing it happen, seeing it play out. So maybe it's a boat for you. Maybe you want to buy like a big boat for your family. Like see yourself on that lake in that boat with the bed downstairs or whatever it looks like, or the cottage that you want to buy or the new couches you want to get or whatever it is. Start envisioning that you have it. 
like legitimately have it. And then just believe that it's happening. And this is the hardest part. When it becomes the 20th of September and you're still at Success Club Zero, you have to keep believing that it's gonna happen. You have to keep seeing yourself announced as a diamond coach. You have to keep seeing yourself in the boat. You have to keep seeing the $5,000 in your bank account. You have to keep seeing the Success Club 10 happening. You have to keep seeing the women show up in your message box. This is the hardest part. You will always get what you ask for. So in the low part of my business, which is really funny, the low, the low point happened when I hit five star. I hit five star and I was like, I have no one to talk to. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh my God, the coaches on my team are better than me. I, I don't know what's happening. My uplines, I, I can't talk to her. Like I literally started spinning out of control down a downward spiral. And you know where my business went? Absolutely nowhere. It stayed the same for a good year, a good couple years. And it's because my belief changed. I didn't have a goal. I was kind of like, okay, well, well, now what? Like, I didn't really know what I was even trying to do. I mean, obviously my dad died in there, like just a lot of stuff happened, but my belief just like washed away. So when I didn't have the belief and the vision and the power behind me to get up and do the work and do the power hour, do all that stuff, nothing happened in my business. So that's why I can say with a lot of confidence that this is what's missing. Within the last year, I have a very strong goal now. I have a very strong vision that is envisioned all day long. I think about it all day long. Some of you are on it. I envision announcing you as my diamond coaches, which is going to get me to my next goal. Like I think about that all the time. I know exactly what I want. I'm very clear on my vision and it all is playing out very naturally because I believe it. And when you believe it and you're excited about it, you actually want to do the work. It's kind of crazy, right? When you're, when you're a member of the struggle bus, yeah, I don't really feel like doing the power hour, do you? Like, no, I would rather wash dishes, do laundry, play Monopoly for five hours, actually. And that's like the worst thing I could possibly ever think about doing is playing Monopoly for even five minutes. Hate it. But I would rather do that if I'm not feeling pumped up about my business. I, would, I, would, I could find so many different things to do. But when you're feeling energetic about your business and excited about your business, just because you have belief pushing you and a goal pushing you, you'll do it every day. So I wanted to start this call with that. I know you want strategy. I promise I'll give you strategy, but no strategy will work. I don't care if you have a hundred thousand followers. If you don't believe in this, if you don't believe in this business, if you don't believe in your ability to do it, if you don't believe in the fact that it can happen for you, and all you need to believe in, if, there, if you're doubting that, which is natural, it's a confidence thing, it's totally natural, don't feel bad, but if you're doubting that you can do this, look at me for proof. I like, I am not special. I did not know social media. I'm actually older than all the popular beach body coaches. Uh, I've actually only gained weight since I started. Um, all the things, right? Like really truthfully, all the things stack up to how did she get where she is? So if I can do it, you absolutely can. When you're feeling like, I don't think I can do this, I'm not good enough, just go look for proof and evidence that it's been done before and that's all you need. It's been done before. There's many, many six-figure earners in network marketing. Tons in Beachbody. Tons of people that have reached the goal that you most likely have. So that's really the first piece. I will go to my grave saying, Success is 95% mindset, 5% strategy. And unfortunately, we all spend so much time thinking about strategy. So much time trying to do all that stuff 
when really, if you would spend even half the time you're worrying about strategy on, and when I say strategy is not doing the power hour, that's activity, that's action. The power hour is action. The power hour doesn't take much strategy. You guys know how to do the power hour. You're Emerald coaches, you're here. You know how to do this. You just think there's a different way. There's not a different way. The power hour, the things that you have all done already to get yourself to Emerald is all you need to get yourself to the next level and the next level and the next level. You already know how to do it. So spend less time scouring around for new strategies, take that time and work on your mindset and see how things might change. Okay, so you're all Emerald coaches, right? So I know that you understand that once you're an Emerald coach, you open up the second source of income, okay? However, you can be an Emerald coach and never see that second source of income if you are not building a team. So just because you've become an Emerald coach does not mean the dollar bills are gonna start flowing in if you're not building a team underneath you. So to create bigger income in network marketing, you really do need to focus on building a team. So how do we do that? This is a little flip. When, you, when you're leading up to Emerald, a lot of times you're dealing with your family and friends and you're really just talking about the fitness, the challenge packs, the, the weight loss, how you're feeling. Once you get to this stage in the game and you're thinking, okay, I want to start tapping into that team cycle bonus. I want to get to diamond. You do need to change your social media strategy a little bit. You need to start talking about this kind of stuff. You need to start talking about coaching. You now need to put your entrepreneurial hat on, your business woman hat on, and start acting as if. I know you don't feel like a leader yet. I know you don't feel like you could lead a team. I know you don't feel like you know what to talk about when it comes to coaching, but you're making it too complicated. You're overthinking it. All you need to do is share your current experience and share where you're going. And that's why I think it's so important to have that goal and that vision. You guys, I used to say in posts, and I kid you not, I would say things like, this train is leaving and you can get on it or not, I don't care. Like I was so sure that I was making this happen. And trust me, people thought I was crazy. Like people thought I was insane for doing this. But I was just like so sure that I was gonna make it work and I talked very boldly about it. And I talked about it a lot. I talked about it in my challenge groups. I did really get people into my circle with the challenge packs and with the health and fitness. But once they got into my circle, I talked about coaching a lot. I'm sure you guys, if you follow me, you saw a post I made a couple weeks ago that shared me very simply thanking Beachbody for being able to purchase a swing set for Delaney. That was the post that, it, that inspired Megan Rempel to be a coach, an active coach. That one little post that was literally two sentences it's, you can see the post, I shared it on my Instagram. It was two sentences long, but because I, um, you know, I use the disclaimer and all that kind of stuff, but I said, you know, I probably wouldn't have been able to purchase this for Delaney without my side coaching gig. You don't even know what stuff like that, making posts like that does to the people that are already in your circle your challengers, the people that are following you, your friends and family. It starts being the proof that you're really taking this to the next level and you want this to work. And you just never know who might be waiting and wanting that. So I know as you're in limbo between Emerald and Diamond, you're trying to fill your downline, right? Like you're trying to find people. And, and sure, you can build 
you can build to diamond on all discount coaches and, and lots of people do that. But ideally to tap into the income, which personally for my team, I want the income and the rank to go at the same time, right? I want it to grow together. So yes, you may have four or five people just wanting the discount and that's going to build you to diamond. Why do you have a green thing? Oh, yeah. Oh my God, um, that's gonna build you to diamond, but to get the income, to get that $14 cycle coming into your paycheck. So now you have commission coming in from selling products and programs and challenge packs, but you're also going to get team cycle coming in because the people underneath you that you're signing on ideally are building this with you. So one strategy when you're posting, talking to people, and talking in your challenge groups is actually saying that I want to do this with some of you guys. Let's do this together. Let's build this thing together. Wouldn't it be so much fun? I mean, when Megan and Justine and like they all joined, they all joined as dis discount coaches. None of them wanted anything to do with it. But then within a couple weeks of me sharing, and talking about it and them seeing it more, they wanted to do it. And then we became our little team together and grew it together. And it was so much fun because we learned the business together, but it took me talking about it first. They wouldn't have known it was even possible or it was even an opportunity if I hadn't talked about it publicly on my social media, privately in my challenge groups, plus directly to them saying, you know, you'd be pretty good at this. Like, you're really inspiring people in my challenge group. Like, why don't you do this with me? So, so if that's your goal, like Jordan, I know, for example, like you are really wanting to get to Diamond. So it's like figuring out all these different things. And I know you're really close. That's why I'm picking on you. And Marianne, you're really close. Like, <laughs> I know, I'm not picking on you. I'm just picking your name. Um, these are the kind of little tweaks that you could do that might inspire some people that you haven't even thought of. When I was super close to Diamond, I was like brainstorming everything. Like who Shakeology is going to come up next? Who, who might want the discount? Who do I think might be good at this? Who, and, and lots of times I would think about those, those people when I was writing my social media posts hoping they would see it. Like I was literally like envisioning who they were, talking to them in my social media posts and making sure that I was actually reaching out to them. You can't just rely on social media. You have to be reaching out to people. Now, when you're also wanting to get to Diamond, it's about getting two of your coaches to Emerald, which is sometimes the hardest part. And it's, you know, being patient, waiting for them to really take off. And some people that you think will, won't, and someone will come out of the woodwork and they will, and you'll be surprised. There's no magic in getting anyone to become an Emerald coach. It's really just you leading the pack. It's you getting successful. It's you being consistent. Your coaches will follow your lead less 10%. And it, it, it's true. No one will ever outwork me on this team. <laughs> they just won't. And it, it's really uh, like every leader says that. So that I know when I take my foot off the gas a little bit, this whole team just kind of goes, eh. but when I get excited, and I get ramped up, the whole thousands, everybody's like success club numbers are higher and everybody has more energy. So you guys, as an Emerald coach leading into Diamond, that's what you have to think about. And it's the same thing with your challenge groups. This is, I think maybe Stacy asked me, how can I get more engagement in my challenge group? You have to be the best challenger. This is my weakest link, you guys. Oh my God, because I could lead a team and talk about business and until like I could stay up 72 hours and never sleep and talk about this, but 
honestly, challenge groups after seven years, I'm like, oh, they're not my favorite anymore. And I can admit that to you guys. So every once in a while, I get this spark, like, okay, I'm going to get back into challenge groups. I'm going to be the best challenger ever. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to post my tracker. And you know what happens when I do that? My challenge group is the best challenge group I've ever had. Everybody's commenting. Everybody's losing weight. Everybody's posting their selfies. It's, it's what you put in, you will get out. You can't make people engage in your challenge groups. I always, it, it, there's an energy. Sometimes you just get one person in there and they just fire up the whole team. It's crazy how it happens. We used to, like back in the day, we used to have challenge groups, like start brand new challenge groups every three weeks with the 21 day fix. And I would literally, it was the exact same posts all three weeks, like nothing changed. Nothing was different except the people. I would have one challenge group where you, I couldn't even keep up replying to all the comments. And then the very next one, literally, I was talking to myself. And it's just like the, the people in there. But the one secret is if your energy is high in your groups, if you're really in there, if you're being the best challenger, they will too they will follow suit. And it's the same with your leadership. Now as an Emerald coach, building your teams, it's the exact same thing. They will follow your, they'll follow you. If you're really excited, if they can tell. So for me, when I started, I put everyone in my team page. I didn't care if they were a discount coach, if they told me they never, ever, ever, Megan, Megan Rempel, nothing. Don't talk to me about that. I just want the discount. I want nothing to do with that. I'm like, no problem. Sure. I'm going to put you in this group. And I would call it a VIP group. And I just said, you get a little bit more motivation in there and just support. It's just lots of fun. Like I just bullshitted my way getting them into that group because I knew inside that group, they could see my excitement about coaching. So I just made my own little private page for just my, my team. So it had nothing to do with my upline. It was my own little page. And I talked to myself for probably a year, legitimately. I would hold calls like this and no one would come. Nobody. Megan told me she was watching The Bachelor. I don't know where Justine was. They were all, I don't know what they were doing. But I had my calls and I recorded them and I just knew that someday, I was going to send out an invitation to people and they were all going to show up. I just knew it. And I kept believing that that was going to happen. So in that team page, I was excited. We're having a call. We're all going to run a group together. I was just so excited about what was going on with Beachbody and with my coaching business. And soon they saw that. They saw that energy. And then they were like reaching out to me. Oh, you know how I told you I didn't want anything to do with that? Well, <laughs> I kind of do now. I kind of want to do it now. I sort of think that might be pretty awesome. That's really how my team was built. So make sure that you're talking. Don't shy away. Remember that you really have two products to sell or to talk about. You have the fitness, the health, the challenge packs, all that stuff, which is always really easy for us to talk about. But you also have a really incredible business opportunity. And I don't want you guys to shy away from sharing it just because we're not allowed to use numbers anymore. So we all know we can't use numbers. You can't go on there saying, I made $500. We can't do that. But there are, you know what? Honestly, in my opinion, I never loved that anyways. I just, I don't know. That's just me. I love seeing someone saying, oh my gosh, I was able to buy, like Stacey Frassen, she's not on here, but tonight she did an awesome post. If you don't follow her, go look at her post today. She was able to buy her daughter um, AirPods and it's just a great post. And those are the kind of things that resonate with people. It's like the playground. It's like this Costco playground that I was able to purchase for Delaney. 
Those are the things. Maybe you can buy your kids new school clothes. Maybe you can not put anything on your credit card at Christmas. Maybe you got yourself a manicure. Like those are the things I've seen Dakota share. You know, she buys some new workout clothes and that and her, her beach body check paid for it. Those are the things that really resonate and will help you build the team. That's how the $14 cycle is going to start. That's how it's going to kick in is when you have people on your team that you've brought on that want to do this with you, that see that, oh, this is cool. Like I could earn 50 bucks this week. I actually just had a new coach message me. She sold one challenge pack last month and that's awesome. You're buying family photos. Talk about that. That's so good, Stacy. Uh, I had one lady... I think I shared it in my story. She messaged me and she's like, I just got a check for $47. So to me, I was almost like, oh God, she only made $47. I'm sorry. I know it should be more. Like that's how I was feeling. And she was like, this is so cool. And I forget, you know, she's a single mom. She's a hairdresser. $47 is a lot. Like that could buy her a movie or something with her kids. Like we forget what a little bit can change someone's life. So don't like feel like, well, yeah, but I don't make the big money yet. So I can't talk about it. Actually, I hate talking about the big money because nobody even believes it. No one thinks it's possible. The little bits is so um, believable. They think, okay, I can do that. I can help one person. $50? I could take my husband. We could go out for half a dinner. I don't know. But she was just so excited about this $47 check. And I'm like, wow, you forget how those little bits really make a difference. So make sure you're talking about that. Be bold about it. You have to kind of get that confidence muscle built up because I know it's scary. I know it's scary to talk to people about it. Trust me, I still sweat buckets doing it, but I make myself invite one person a day to join my team. And I've done that forever. I just get it, I bang it out. It's like one of the first things I do every single day. Every single day. Someone watching my stories, someone that I've seen, sometimes it's a follow-up, I've asked them before. You know, I just always make sure I do that. I do that before I worry about even inviting my challenge group because it's the scariest one. And I usually do it as a joke. I'm like, yeah, oh, you're gonna think I'm crazy. You're gonna laugh at me, but I've been thinking about it. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna tell you, have you ever thought about this? I think you'd be great at it. I don't care, like who cares? What's the worst they're gonna say? People say no to me all the time. My kid says no to me 20 times a day. I'm very used to hearing that word, right? If you just kind of take the emotion out of it and just get into a routine of asking all the time, it makes it a lot easier and you just never ever know. Never ever prejudge anyone. Don't ever prejudge. When you're asking like you're one person a day, is it sometimes like, is it mostly like discount coaches that you're wanting to actually work the business? Like who is it you're throwing those invites out to? Anyone. Uh, like I definitely, anyone that is a challenger, anyone that has ever bought anything from me gets asked. Anyone. Because if you've bought something, then you like Beachbody. I just believe that to be true. So I will open it up with like, have you ever thought about doing something like this? I mean, it's a lot easier if you know their Shakeology is coming up. You know, if you go in your back office and you see, oh, they haven't canceled their auto ship. I should go and ask them. Like, that's just like a no brainer. If you're not doing that, you need to get into your back office. Like I was glued to that thing, at what, especially getting to diamond. Like I just was like getting to diamond ASAP. That was just like a non-negotiable for me. So every single person I could see, okay, she is going to get Shakeology again. I am going to, at the very least, offer her the discount, but I never relied on the discount. I just 
offered up like, did you know that you can actually earn some income if you wanted to? If I thought that she would maybe want to do something like I was doing, I would say, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I think you'd be really good at this. Like you're, you're always commenting in our challenge group. You're always supporting everybody. Would you ever want to do this? And then they're like, no, that's crazy. I would never do that. I'm like, okay, well, at the very least, I would like to help you save some money on your Shakeology. So it just always ended up leading into something. I mean, that's exactly how Megan started. And Justine, I think Justine actually reached out to me um, and she wanted the discount, but I don't want to do the business. Here she is. So you just never know where that will lead. But like today, I did a whole series about coaching on my stories. I will go and I'll look to the people that stayed the whole time. So as you know, I ramble on forever and ever. So it's a big deal if someone stays for eight slides. <laughs> then I get a lot of drop off. If they actually stay till the end, I will for sure. And I make a joke. I'm like, oh my God. Did you have me on mute or did you actually listen to all that? <laughs> and then I'll ask them. I'll be like, well, I was talking about coaching. Have you ever thought about doing it? Ideally, I've connected with them in some way before, right? Like most of the time I have, I'm pretty good at connecting with people that are, are on my page and watching me. But that's part of your power hour. That's part of your action hour that you guys should be doing as well. But I, I just like I find someone to ask. Even if it's someone that I just think might be good at it, you know, maybe like I'm at, I'm to the point that I, I'm pretty bold about it. Like, you know, if someone's been following me a long time, like, what are you doing here? Why are you still here? What, what do you want? Like, do you want to do this or what are we doing here? Like, I am pretty bold about it. I know you guys maybe aren't yet, but I would just get into the practice of making sure you're doing it. You can make anything a joke. I have always used humor. Like, and then when you use humor, no one's offended. No one's mad at you. No one thinks you're salesy. They just, they're like, no, Michelle, I would never want to do that. I'm like, okay, well, I, I still think you would be good at it. I think you'd be awesome at it. And I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm never going to, whatever. Like, I just, it never ends bad. I've never had it end bad, ever. They're flattered. And the way I see it is then I've planted a seed. They may laugh at me, but now the next time I ramble on about coaching, they're going to pay attention because they're going to be like, oh my God, like I, I actually can't believe she thought I'd be good at that. Everybody loves to be complimented. Like who wouldn't want to hear, I think you would be good at that. Everybody wants to hear that, right? And once you do that, then they start like, oh, oh really? Okay. So it's just something that I've always used. Okay, I'm gonna go into the chat for a second. Oh yeah, I'm buying family photos. I think that's awesome. You need to talk about that, Stacy, for sure. Okay, so a couple of the questions that came in today. Um, time management was a question. <laughs> I'm looking at that smiling face that asked it. So, okay, I'm gonna get real with you guys on time management. And I, you, you want me to, to share with you how you can balance the business and your kids and your life. And I'm going to tell you, there is no balance. Like, let's just think about this logically. You have added something in that a lot of you are expecting to change your life. How can you really balance that? It's chaos. <laughs> it's absolutely chaos. Like, truthfully, I, I, I hate, like, I, really, I refuse to lie to people about what it takes to do this. But what I can tell you is, when you live in the chaos for a couple years, the, 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 the return is so incredible. Like, I was in tears today, to be honest, when I reflected on the fact that I was able to be home with Delaney for seven months without a worry in the world about finances or about time. Because we were here. We, were, we both work home, at home because of Beachbody. My husband was able to 
leave a company and start a new one. I was able to close a company and do this. So was the first couple of years insane? Oh my God, it was insane. Like I was up at four in the morning. I really was. And I would love to tell you that I spent an hour and a half meditating and journaling and reading, and, but I didn't. It was chaos. I read for 10 minutes. I set the alarm. Like I literally set my timer, read for 10 minutes, did my workout, quickly got a post up, went to work, got my child ready, like did all the things, came home after 12 hours at work, did the kid thing, and then worked some more. But I was organized. I did not do any bullshit. I didn't scroll social media. I didn't worry about what every other coach was doing. I picked one call to listen to, like attend a week. Like it was usually like, a, but they didn't have so many things. Like now there seems to be just so many distractions. So if there's anything I can tell you about time management is you have to manage your own time. You have to manage your own priorities. And I feel like a lot of people just overcomplicate this. Like get your post up, decide what, like, what are you Sunday? I mean, if you watched my time management call, I laid it all out there. Nothing has really changed in my business. On Sunday, I decide what the hell is going on. What are we talking about this week? What am I trying to fill this week? My challenge group, okay. I need to talk about things that are going to attract people to my challenge group. Does that mean I'm gonna share a recipe? Does that mean I'm gonna share tips? Uh, am I gonna do a transformation picture? Like what, what's going on? I think a lot of people, instead of, scrolling, comparing, <laughs> trying to find a new secret strategy. If, if everybody would just sit for an hour and just decide what's, what's going on, make some different posts, you'd be golden. Cause like I, that's what I did every Sunday. All my posts were crafted and they don't have to be complicated. You guys, I think a lot of you look at the leaders on the team or the, 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 the coaches, top coaches. And unfortunately, you're thinking that you have to duplicate what everybody's doing. You don't. Keep it simple. Like honestly, people are attracted to losing weight. That's what you can help them with. <laughs> Keep it simple. Really. Like all the woo-woo stuff that I talk about, I wouldn't. I would just keep it basic. I honestly, like, like just, I think everything gets so overcomplicated and then everybody gets spinning out of control. Like they don't know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know who I should be talking to. Just think about what Beachbody has done for you. What is it helping with you? What is it helping you with currently? And what has it already helped you with? And talk about that. And you're going to, has it helped you lose five pounds? Awesome. Talk about the five pounds. Has it, Shakeology helped you with cravings? Good help talk about that. Has uh, the virtual workout room helped you get your ass out of bed to get a workout done? Good. Talk about that. Has the community given you friends when you've only had your kids to talk, talk to for the last five years? Talk about that. Like whatever it's really helped you with, keep it simple and always think, what could I do? What could I post today that would have helped me before I found Beachbody. What would have helped me? So for me, that was like recipes. I was always on the hunt for recipes. So like, what were you searching for when it came to health and fitness before? Keeping it so simple. Like that's really, there's, that's my best time management hack. Figure out what's happening either on Saturday and Sunday, and then you'll just feel organized. If you have a little extra time, craft those posts. Get a Google Doc and just get them written out. I swear that's what I did every Sunday. There's no way I would have been able to do this. 
absolutely no way. And then all I had to worry about was messages, doing the messages. Then you need to get organized. Like if you need to feel organized, find a time when you can organize that, what you need to do every week. Find when you're going to fit in the hour, the power hour. Cause that's really like, that's really all you need to do every day is that power hour. And I did it in pockets. I did it in pockets at work. I just did like lunch hour, 15 minutes after work, 15 minutes. And it's really just creating those relationships and doing those invites. So that's why I had to organize the social media part on the weekends before work and kids and all that stuff got into the mix of during the week. So how I did it was I just gave, I gave up sleeping in. That, that was just my, what I did. I still got up at four, four thirty, on Sunday and I just did it. It was worth it to me though, because I, I truthfully going all the way back to the beginning of the call, there was never a doubt in my mind that it was going to be, that it was going to pay off. It, there just wasn't. I knew that every hour I got up earlier and every piece of work I did was going to be worth it. And I really did believe it. And I think that was like part of the secret was I just believed it was going to happen. And then that propelled me to get up and organize my week. And then during the week, all I had to do was messages. I wasn't scrambling ever. So that's really like, I think my time management tips are don't get hung up on things that don't matter. Like we, again, I just go back to overcomplicating things and like, just keep it really simple. Um, get in and get out. <laughs> Social media is going to be your biggest time waster. And it is so much worse now. Like stories, holy shit, TikTok, reels. Like I could waste friggin' my whole night. In fact, I did last night. I watched, I got caught up in one reel and then all of a sudden Terry's like, do you know that you've been sitting on there for like an hour? And I had been, I legitimately had watched reels for like 45 minutes of <laughs> nothing. Like it wasn't even things that I could reproduce. <laughs> Usually I can copy some of them, but no, I, I mean, so that's how distracting it can be. And that's why I love, I think it's Megan's like timer hack. Like she is a big believer in using a timer. So if you are easily distracted by crazy things, set that timer, like five minutes. Okay, I got to go in, make my post and maybe engage a little bit, be social on social media. But as soon as the timer goes off, get out, turn your notifications off, get out, get out, get out, and then go on to the next thing. When I'm making posts, like when I'm crafting posts, I, I never have my apps open. So like on my computer on Sunday morning, cause that's when I do it. Facebook is not turned on. Instagram is not on. All that's open on my desktop is my docs, my Google docs. And I can clearly say, okay, I know that the better together coaching info group is coming up on Tuesday. So starting like, Wednesday today, if you saw, you can clearly see, you guys will know by what I'm posting about what we're talking about, right? So today was a first post to kind of get people thinking about coaching. Tomorrow will be, I don't know, but there'll be like some call to action. So I knew on Sunday, this is what was going on this week. So I only had my docs open and I did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Monday's a holiday just talk about whatever. Tuesday, this. Wednesday. So I, I don't necessarily even anymore write the whole post out, but I will get the idea for sure. Back in the day when I was working, I took my pictures and everything on Sunday. <laughs> I would bring workout, to, like I just did selfies. If you go back, I was just me and selfies and recipes. That's all I posted ever. Um, I would bring down like four or five workout tops. I'd put my hair up, put my hair down, be all sweaty, be not like, I just, I got everything done on Sunday. 
So it wasn't that pretty. It wasn't like insta perfect, but it doesn't need to be. Those are, those are some things we get caught up in, right? Oh, my selfies are horrible. And you take like 700 and you try and like filter them up and oh my God, there's an hour gone. And you probably end up not even posting <laughs> because you're like worried about, like those are the things that I just had no time for. I was like, screw this. I am doing this. It's the words and my energy that are going to mean way more than how I look in my selfie. In fact, people are way more attracted to, you know this by now, all of you. People are way more attracted to the pictures that you think are horrible than the ones that you think are perfect. I'm sure most of you will shake your head in agreeing with that. Like mm -hmm. the ones that you just randomly put up there and you're like, oh my God, I can't even believe I'm posting this. Get all the love. And the stuff that you like tried to filter and look perfect, they're the ones that like nobody even looks at. It's the same with your posts. I can throw up a post that I like took no time to think about. It just like flew out of my mind, you know, flew out and it'll get all this attention. And then something that I've spent like two hours trying to make perfect doesn't even get a like. <laughs> it's, yeah, so it's like get in, get out, get it done. But be organized in knowing what's going on. I think that's probably the biggest tip is like, be aware. That's why like as your leader, um, I swear to God, I, I don't want to talk to myself in my team page. Like I always have a reason for posting. I want you guys to, why do I do that weekly banner? So you guys know what's going on. Why does it go up on Sunday? So you can plan, so you can see like, okay, the Better Together info group is coming up. That's why I do a calendar. Oh, pumpkin spice is coming. Oh, 10 rounds, can't, like whatever. It's there so you guys know. I tell you all the information I get and I try to make sure I'm constantly pumping it so you guys can kind of like, beyond me like being so blunt, like you guys, you need to talk about this all week. I'm trying to just make sure that you guys know what's going on so you know what to talk about. You should always be filling your challenge groups, right? That's just, just like, that's got to be your number one focus. So at the beginning of the month, you need to pick a date for when your challenge group is coming. Even if you have an ongoing group, my suggestion is to have like a date where you want people to sign up. Their FOMO is a real thing. So I'll just give you my last week. I am launching a program for my other business next week. So I had to get to Success Club yesterday. Like that was like my non-negotiable. I had to get to Success Club 10. So I know, I know how sales psychology goes. You talk it up, you talk it up, you build the excitement, you build the excitement, you then tell them that there's a hard stop. There is a hard stop. Sunday night, it is over and you offer a bonus. Okay? I got to Success Club 12. It, it, and it was like all the points were on one day because they saw the hard stop. My group doesn't start and stop. <laughs> so behind the scenes, nothing magical is happening. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Like it's the same group. They all get fed into the same group on BOD, but I will help them. So there's six new women and I will help them as a pod, like their starting date, their day one of 2B mindset. But when I'm talking about it on social media, I'm very, very, very excited about the day one, about everyone starting together, about how we're doing this together, how it's going to be so awesome. Da, 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 da. And I give a bonus. The bonus can be anything, you guys. It can be a PDF recipe book. It can be, you could give a call. Why don't you give a 15 minute call? Like that bonus thing really works. So I just have like this couple videos of myself talking about body kindness. That's my, that's my bonus. But you have to have a date. Okay. You have to have a date. So at the beginning of the month, you should always just decide when your date is. 
when are you starting? So your, your start date, whatever, if you need two weeks, if I, I think the last time. I do not need Shakeology to arrive to start. The only time you would need that is a three-day refresh group. But everybody's getting everything they need digitally. You could literally, it's what day is it today, Wednesday? You could have Monday as a date. Easy. You could blow it up. It's your energy that people get attracted to. If you get, if you guys watch me, you can see the energy that I have in my stories when I'm launching, when I have a day one. It's different than the regular energy. And that's what launching is all about. So at the beginning of the month, you decide when your challenge group is, fill it as fast as you can. Guys, there's some days that it's the 27th and I'm still not at Success Club. So it doesn't always work perfectly, but the intention is always there to get there as quickly as possible. And then I transition into talking about coaching. That's how I organize my month. I try and get challengers first, then transition into coaching. And that's why I always try and put the coaching group later in the month. That's kind of my flow. But you guys can do your own flow, right? Like, and as you build your teams, you'll do your own flow. Maybe you'll have groups together and you'll, you'll, you'll work on it together. Um, engagement was the other thing, but I really think I kind of went over that, Stacey, did I? Yeah, okay, okay. Challenge groups, like it's like just, <laughs> you just can't predict it that you might get one woman in there that's like super high energy, then everyone becomes high energy. And then sometimes you just like feel like you have all duds and you're talking to yourself. I, those people, like when it's a really quiet group, I just really make sure that I'm checking in with everyone personally, like with a message. Cause you never know who's behind the scenes really needing you or wanting you. There's always people that are like, for example, I would never have talked in a challenge group, ever. In fact, I was never in a challenge group before I ran a challenge group for people. Like I would have been the silent lurker in a challenge group, sitting there that kind of wanted to coach, right? So you just never know. So one thing that I used to do, I don't, I'm not as good at it anymore, I will say, uh, but I used to message my challengers every single Sunday. I did my workout on Sunday mornings or whenever. And the, the thing I did after when I was cooling down is I sent all of my cha challengers a voice message. So at some point in time, that got, kind of got a little overwhelming because there was a lot of people, but that was always great. They really appreciated it. Most of the time, they just kind of sent me a heart back or I'm doing great. Like it was not very often that it ended up being this long winded conversation, but it really kept that relationship strong. And then when I came in at the end of the challenge group and asked them about coaching, it wasn't weird because I had really kept the relationship up with them. One thing that I hate, like just for myself is how it feels to talk and talk and talk and, and support them. And then they buy and then it's like you kind of dump them <laughs> like you dump them into this group and just like say okay here's the wolves you go for it so i always kind of just felt personally that i needed to stay chatting with them in some way and how i organized that was i just threw out all the voice messages in one like sunday I just voice messaged that. It was very easy. Like, Hey, how are you? I just wanted to check in. It's Sunday. Are you ready for Monday? Like it was just very, very, very simple. Didn't take very long. Even if I had a big group, it's just a way of staying connected. Okay. Any other questions you guys? You can unmute yourself if you have any. Oh, <laughs> Nothing. I covered everything. That's amazing. Okay. Awesome. Was this helpful? Very helpful. Very? Mm -hmm. Good. Do you feel excited to build your teams? Get that mm -hmm. dollars rolling? Okay. My gears are going. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Yay. Okay. Awesome, guys. Oh, did someone take pictures? Anybody? 
I can. Yes, can you? <laughs> and tag me? Yep. Hey, tag. I'm just going to switch my screen. Justine and Tina, if you're there. Okay, everybody, Tina. smile. <laughs> beautiful. Everyone look beautiful. Thank you, Jordan. Okay, thank you, guys. I appreciate you coming. I know that you're busy and all the things are going on, so I appreciate it. Okay, bye, guys.